Good day ladies and gentlemen, Rosa here of Splat Communications and Simplified Strategic Solutions. Our video for today is the analysis made by the Chief Data Scientist of Publicus Asia, Dr. David B. Yap Jr. regarding their latest survey results at Publicus Asia Q1. In the analysis he mentioned that he ran the probability of who would win the elections for president and vice president 10,000 times using the Monte Carlo mathematical simulation. He shared his findings in the analysis. Before we start, may we request those who have not subscribed yet to please do so. Please do not skip ads as this helps us remain independent. We shall start after the brief channel intro for a few seconds. Now moving into uh, our analysis of the results, uh, according to our March 30 to April 6 numbers, uh, former Senator Marcos and Mayor Duterte are leading the presidential and vice presidential races by 33 points and 43 points respectively. Now, based on the data that we have on hand, what are the probabilities of their closest rivals catching up to them in the one month left to go before Election Day on May 9? Uh, I'm, I'm one of those statisticians who is true forecasting. There are simply way too many variables at play to make predictions. In model-based forecasting, any deviation from the underlying assumptions would invalidate the forecasts. Uh, given my position in Publicus, however, I have prepared for this eventuality by running 10,000 Monte Carlo simulations based on existing survey data from Publicus, Pulse Asia, Lilo, and Octa. The fundamental principle behind this strategy is to use existing survey data as, as baselines for potential scenarios as defined by a probability distribution. These 10,000 simulations strongly suggest that Bombo Marco is expected to win in the upcoming elections. The same can be said of Sara Duterte in the DT race. Uh, it is important to note at this junction that survey data do not capture command votes, bailiwicks, and party machinery. This is where political party allegiances, local executives, and endorsements of groups such as the INC come into play. All of these make sampling for surveys more challenging in the sense that they affect the overall heterogeneity of the population. At this, at this point, it is important to consider which candidates are getting the support of these major factions and adjust expectations and estimates accordingly. Uh, now, David, maybe for the uh, benefit of our viewers, if you could just explain a little bit uh, what exactly is a Monte Carlo simulation? I mean, you said that you did it 12, 10,000 times. That seems like a lot of work, but how how does this help us uh, predict or at least establish the probability of certain outcomes based on a large data set? So the, the fundamental principle behind the Monte Carlo simulation is that you take a game of, of chance, meaning any game with with un with predetermined outcomes, all with certain probabilities of occurring. So with those types of parameters, and then as I said earlier, using survey data from from reputable survey firms, uh, I was then able to create the vector of parameters that are necessary to simulate quote-unquote 10,000 uh, elections. So in those 10,000 hypothetical or simulated elections, roughly how often did uh, former Senator Marcos and uh, Mayor Duterte win? All of them. I see. Okay. <laughs> wow. That was a great revelation. Now, my partner Wina shall attempt to explain the Monte Carlo method in simple terms. Go ahead, partner Wina. Thank you, partner Rosa. Mula sa pagsasaliksik ng Splat Communications at Simplified Strategic Solutions, isinalin namin ang artikulo mula sa website ng tanyag ng hardware company na IBM or Integrated Business Machines. Upang mas madali nating maunawa ang lahat kung ano nga ba ang Monte Carlo method sa data science. Ang Monte Carlo simulation ay kilala rin bilang Monte Carlo method or maramihang kunwang probabilidad. 
Ito ay isang matematikong pamamaraan na ginagamit upang tansyahin ang mga posibleng kakalabasan ng isang hindi siguradong kaganapan. Example, sino ang mananalo sa halalan? Gaya ng ginawa ng Chief Data Scientist ng Publicus Asia na si Dr. David B. Yap Jr., na nagsagawa ng 10,000 iba't ibang senaryo upang matukoy kung sino ba talaga ang mananalo sa halalan base sa mga datos ng iba't ibang scientific survey results ng preference shares ng mga kandidato pagkapangulo at pangalawang pangulo. Ang Monte Carlo Method ay inimbento ni John von Neumann at Stanislo Ulam noong ikalawang digma ang pandaigdig upang mapabuti ang pagdedesisyon sa mga kondisyong hindi sigurado. Ito ay ipinangalan sa isang bayan na kilala sa kasino, ang Monaco sa kadahilan ng ang elemento ng pagkakataon ay nakapaloob sa ginawang pagmamodelo ay malapit o kahalintulad sa popular na game of chance o rulite. Popular sa atin bilang rulite ng kapalaran. Mula nang ito ay ipinakilala, ang Monte Carlo simulations ay nagamit na upang suriin ang mga epekto sa maraming totoong buhay na senaryo, gaya ng artificial intelligence, or tinatawag na AI. Sa presyo ng stock, sa pagtatansya ng benta, project management, at pagpepresyo. Ito rin ay nagbibigay na maraming mga pakinabang kay sa predictive models na may mga nakapirming inputs. Gaya ng abilidad na makapagsagawa ng sensitivity analysis, o kwentahin ang ugnayan ng mga input. Hinahayaan ng sensitivity analysis ang mga tagagawa ng desisyon na makita ang epekto ng mga individual na input sa isang binigay na kakalabasan at ang kaugnayan nito. Ito ay nagbibigay ng daan upang maunawaan ang relasyon sa pagitan ng mga input variables. Sana po ay naliwanagan po tayo ukol dito sa matematikong proseso na ito kahit pahapyaw man lamang. Wow! Great explanation partner Wina. Ladies and gentlemen, what can you say? Kindly share your thoughts in the comment portion. We would just like to stress out that our unscientific analysis is pretty much accurate. Before this extremely complex computation was performed by Dr. David Yap Jr., it turns out that we have similar conclusions, which we are reiterating again. Former Senator Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and Davao City Mayor Indy Sara Duterte will win in May 9th. Not only that, they will both with majority preference shares, something that is unheard of in the history of Philippine elections. We are just 30 days away from the most lopsided elections in history. The opponents of BBM and Sara Uni team will lose with the largest margin of defeat ever recorded in Philippine election history. Let us all take a moment for that to sink in. Game over. Game over. Game over. As always, we are reminding everyone not to be complacent. Remain vigilant. We have reached the end of today's video. Kindly follow the social media pages of Publicus Asia, the links are in the description of the video. In behalf of my partner Wina and the rest of the Splat Communications and Simplified Strategic Solutions team, thank you. Till next time. Stay safe. Rosa out. Bye.